If you only know one thing about security, this should be it, which is SQL injection. Your database is where all the goodies are, and stealing out of the database is the worst thing that could happen. And so uh, this is the biggest web app problem in the world. It's the number one on the OWASP top 10, and it looks like it's never going to leave from that number one position. Um, we're getting no improvement at all for any measurements of it. Uh, so the point is, uh, your book blames it on interpreted code, which I guess is true, because compiled code doesn't let you add more source code afterwards. You'd have to inject binary code in the form of buffer overflow exploit, and we cover that in exploit development class, but it's pretty difficult. You have to do some complicated stuff to do it, whereas SQL injection is very, very easy. And command injection is very, very easy because you just get to inject high-level code. And you've already done it, and this ping command is the simplest command injection, where you go here and you type in google.com, but you can just put a semicolon and put more commands on the line and they will execute. That's the simplest uh, command injection. And um, if you had a compiled injection, compiled language, you wouldn't be able to do a thing like that, except under special conditions. So for SQL injection, you can do things like bypass a login. So if you want to have somebody log in, you have a form, and they send up a username and a password, and if they send up Marcus in secret, it will then do something like this, select from a table users to see if there's a record that has a username like that, a password like that. If you put in admin apostrophe and any password, oh, yeah, there are two dashes after it also, then you'll get a line like this. And the point of this is the dash dash starts a comment. So this is all there is, where username equals admin and nothing else. And so it doesn't even look at the password and it lets you log in as the admin. That's the idea. Now that is if the dash dash actually starts a comment. And I must say, in my experience, I almost never come across databases where this dash dash thing works. There are other comment characters like pound that I see work far more often, but that is the standard everybody shows in the examples for some reason. So here's the most common one. This most most people start SQL injection, just apostrophe or one equals one dash dash. Then the query becomes username equals empty or one equals one. And this may or may not be true, but this is always true. Therefore, you log in as the first user in the database, which is typically the administrator. Um, and so you've already done a lot of this stuff. That's why. This should not be new to you. You've already done it on, on the project. Now, union is really useful. You can combine two select statements. Now, this produces a single set of results, which are added together. So let's go back to this thing and try a few of them. If I go to attack here, let's try a few unions. Here's the SQL. All right. Reset it always. <coughs> All right. So here I got Herp Derper, and there is one record named Herp Derper. But if I put an apostrophe, and then <coughs> uh, this will do, then union select SSN from SQLOL SSN. This will take this one record, and then it will select social security numbers from another table and put them in one record set. And what it'll do is put the text here and then put all these numbers down there. Now, social security numbers are also text. But even if they weren't, it would just convert them to text to add them in. So this is a six, I mean only five records in the tables, but I have a total of six records in this query because I have the first one and then I union five more onto them. That's what union does. And by the way, the union will not work if it has a different number of columns in part of it. So if I try to put in name and SSN in the second table, but the first table only has one, then it won't run. It'll say the two select statements have a different number of columns. They don't really have to match the data types very much, although if you have a field that's something like a date or money, and then you put text in beneath it, it will reject that. But if you start with text, you can put anything underneath it, it will just convert it to text. So the, the column types don't have to be identical, but they have to be consistent. Yeah? I mean, if you just need to match numbers of columns, you can put like empty quotes and kind of parenthetically separate them to like make extra columns. Yes, you, you, yeah, you can put in nulls. And that's why what they recommend in the book as part of a process is to find out how many columns you have. You can just select null. And that'll just be nothing. And if you do that, you don't even have to say what table it's coming from. You can submit it and see here's hurt and there's null. So you can add null. So if you don't know how many columns there are, what they recommend, what I think a lot of automated tools do is this. Just try null, null, try two, three, four, until you see when it works. And when you have enough nulls for it to work, you find out how many columns there are. Yeah. Uh, the asterisk, it, SQL is kind of screwy. The asterisk here would be everything from the table, but the wild card is percent in like, for like a name. 
So if I want all the names starting with H, I'd put H percent. But then I could select star from a table. And if I do, it'll fail for a number of columns. Um, S Q L O L S S N. That's going to fail because a different number of columns. But the star would be two things. So I'd have to do something like uh, name here. There. So now I'll get names starting with H followed by all the names from the other table. All right. And uh, let's see what else is worth mentioning here. That's union to add social security numbers. Well, like I say, I've used a, a pound is what uses a works for a comment in that database. The pound I see work most of the time. When that doesn't work, a slash star works. I almost never find that dash dash working. I don't know why people say that's the standard one, but I don't see it work much. Maybe it works in Microsoft databases or something. Um, or it's only in MySQL. Yeah, I always use MySQL. Uh, Oracle is quite rare. Um, SQL injection Oracle is relatively new. It does happen, but it's not the most common. Microsoft seems to be the most common people write about. And uh, I haven't tested it much. Anyway, then there's, like I say, two results have to have the same structure, the same number of fields, and compatible data types. They don't have to be exactly identical, but they have to be able to convert into this, whatever the first column was. Yeah? Uh, I think the reason why the, con the dash dash doesn't work yeah. is that will only allow like a single line. So if your thing kind of wraps to another one, that's why the slash star works, because it will take multiple okay. lines. Okay. That could be, yeah. Maybe but the pound only does a single line, and that usually works in most of my databases. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I like to do the raw number of columns. You've seen that. If you try uh, one column and you try to add two columns to it, it will fail. Now, of course, you can do what we did in the project, which is um, if you do want to get the name and the SSN, you do concat. Concat name and SSN. And now you get two fields, but you combine them into one text field, and that should work now. And it does. So you could always do that. But you can't, if you start with one field. And another thing, by the way, you might assume, I can see there's only one column here. So why am I wondering how many columns there are? You don't really know there's only one column here. You, all you know is only one column is displayed. It might have fetched <coughs> 10 columns and only displayed one. So, um, and this, by the way, is the difference between blind SQL injection and simple SQL injection. Simple SQL injection is where you can see some results, where something is repeated back. There's also blind SQL injection, where the structure of the, the web app is such that when it completes, it doesn't print the results. It just lets you do something. So there has to be some condition, some way to tell whether it worked or not. And then all you can do is ask 20 questions. Like if it fails, it'll show an error message. If it works, it'll show like the, the admin control panel or something, but it's not going to show anything you can put on there. So what you do is you, up here you put in, in the query, you put something like or, or and this condition, and you can ask a question that's true or false. And you can, each query, you see whether you get the error or not, and that tells you whether the thing you added was true or false. And so you have to add a long series of questions, like the first name of the first table in the database starts with A. True or false? Starts at B. True or false? Yeah. Could you use the wild card if you replace the like keyword with equal sums? Um, you can use wild cards in some places, like here to select things. Where do you want to put it? Uh, well, in, in, in the query, in the original one that's sitting within the code, there is a keyword like. There is. But if you replace it with. Uh, uh, equal sign, does it, is it going to still allow the wild card? I think so, but I'm not sure. That might be the issue. It's a good, you have to try it and see. Or take the SQL course, I don't know. It's a good point. Uh, all right, so that's different data types. Like I say, you can add numbers below text because it will just convert the numbers to text. And uh, anyway, so here's the half steps recommended to do SQL injection. And this is pretty much what all the automated tools do. First, you've got to find, first you Add in apostrophes and all your punctuation marks until you see an error of some sort, the syntax error. Then you know you're vulnerable. After you find the vulnerability, here's a general algorithm to exploit it. Start by putting in nulls until you find the right number of columns. Add nulls until you don't get an error message anymore. And that tells you how many columns there are. Now, um, you've got to find um, a column that's a string that you can see. So you can put the things you want to steal in the string. So select A null 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 A null 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 A and see which one of them will let you put an A in there. And, and that, then you found a, a text column that you can see. Then uh, you can play games. You can find the database version with add at version. Um, that'll show you here. So if I can do that back here. Um, I can do H union select add at version. 
And that should do it. And it does. There's the version PH, MySQL, this number on Ubuntu 14.04. All right. So you tell what kind of database you've got. That's one thing you can do. And um, then you can dump out whatever you like. Now, here's one I found in 2013 from a college in San Francisco. I contacted them over and over, telling them they should do something about this. And I thought it was interesting. This was the URL that was in like a Russian forum. Montserrat.edu press release item ID equals minus one union select um, one comma two comma group can catch username and password four five six seven eight nine ten. So instead of using null, they like to use numbers. Select one two three four five. You can see this automated tool tried um, tried one two three four five six seven eight nine ten to figure out there were ten columns in their query, and then it just replaced one of those numbers by something else and it's concatenated username, I think colon and password is what it's done here from some table and on it goes. And uh, this is the live username and password of what appears to be the administrator user on that system. And I contacted them for years, and they just they didn't even talk to me on the phone. I talked to them anyway. They never do anything about it. Now it's finally fixed. And what's strange is now after like three years, they've actually done what I told them to do. If you go there now, it's a Cloudflare page. And if you finish it, they're using Cloudflare's web apps firewall to protect it, which is if you really find improving your coding practices to be impossible, you can just buy a box or rent a box and have a cloud, and it will stop some attacks before they reach your server. It's a whole lot weaker than actually fixing your code, but it's better than nothing. And that's what they have now. Now it, then it gives you an error message saying your request appears to be malformed or something, which is what a way that firewall would do. Then there's MS SQL. Here's some examples from the book of how the Microsoft SQL works. So they got an app where you can do a query for Matthew and you'll get name and email of Matthew. And so now you gotta find out how many columns there are. So you try sending a Matthew apostrophe union select null dash dash. And you get an error message. Um, so you try more and more and it finally works when you have five columns. You select null, 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 null. And now you get two empty rows at the end. So it's querying five numbers and only five values and only letting you see two of them. So now you know what to do. Now you want to find a string column. So you try putting an A in and the A goes in under Matthew. So that means that's a string as if it wasn't obvious already that it was a string. And so now that you've found them, uh, you can get the table and the column names at once. Now in the project you did them separately, but you can do them both at once. Since you can select up to five fields, you can select table name, column name, null, 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 from information schema and here's the table names and there's the column names. And so, you know, if you have multiple fields in the same table, it gives you them all paired up. So you see there's various things here, but the users has got username and password. And now that you know the names of the tables and the fields, you can construct the query to steal the stuff you want, which is select username password from users. And now you get the database listing all everybody's username and password. And this is what people do all the time to steal data. It's that easy. It's ridiculously easy. And that's why you know a bunch of punks and anonymous could steal it from everybody. Uh, by doing nothing, by not even knowing what they're doing at all, but just running hubby. It does all this automatically. So you just point and click, and you earned yourself a 10-year prison term. Um, you can easy, this is, uh, that's the, I think why everyone is so excited in the government about cyber threats. A very unskilled attacker can do an enormous amount of harm. And that's kind of why they're so very, very freaked out about people like Snowden, just a minor contractor someplace, and how much damage can he do? He can do an incredible amount of damage. <laughs> and how do we make sure there's not another guy doing that? <laughs> anyway. This is slightly off topic. But yeah. What did you think about the big hacking over the on Friday? Which one? The Casper. The taking the um, taking the the backbone down. Oh, that th that was a DOS attack. Yeah. Well, it, the Internet of Things is the problem. I mean, it's. Yeah. Uh, that's then, that, but they actually, that shamed the Chinese webcam manufacturing actually recalling their stuff. But they're going to have to see a lot more of that as the Internet of Things comes out. That's why Mudge is trying to fix it with like UL listing. There ought to be some like minimum cybersecurity safety, like there's minimum electrical chassis safety. But we're, we have to pass it through Congress. So for the next five years, I don't see any improvement on that score coming. But that's the problem flooding the Internet with poorly designed, cheap crap. We're going to have more of that. Anyways, here, what, what is required when you use union?
Mudge has been trying to get cyber UL listing created, where there is some kind of government test and some kind of stamp you put on saying, this product is safe enough to use, and they weren't going to enforce it by law, but they're going to enforce you to label it, and then hopefully consumers will choose to pay a few more bucks to get the one that has the certification on it. That might happen, but not anytime soon, I think. Well, why don't they do a private certification? What's that? Instead of a government certification, why don't they do a private? Like yeah, UL. Well, UL was not really governed either, I think. It was under Rogers Lab. Yeah, that's the point. He's, anyway, he's, he's trying to develop tests. Maybe the same number of columns is what you need. Um, He's trying to develop some kind of standard tests for things like appliances and webcams and thermostats and medical implants and everything so you can have some kind of seal of approval. And uh, he's been talking about it at conferences for years, but it isn't happening yet. It is a good idea if you could somehow really agree on what the test should be. And I'm not so sure if, if we're going to be able to do that, but it's a pretty good idea. All right, so which one of these will match any data type? I think the answers are in. And null matches anything. I'm not sure about 0 and 1, but null matches everything. I want, 0 and 1 might not match a thing like a date. But anyway. Um, is this for all versions of SQL? Uh, I think so, but Oracle might be special. There's details in the book. Sometimes Oracle is special. You can use null and Oracle. Yeah. Some other parts of this. I think the thing that's different in you know, Oracle is that information schema table has a different name. All right. What's the best defense against SQL injection? I went through this in the project, I hope. If you only learn one thing from the class, this should be it. <laughs> I'll quit at 25. All right, and that is parameterized queries. Good, the most popular answer. Now we should talk about these. These are all worth talking about, actually. But well, parameterized queries define a data object, which is what came <coughs> in It cannot be misinterpreted as a code object. There is no parsing of the line to match up apostrophes to decide where the data ends and the code starts. There's just a code, uh, a data object in the parameter, which is then compared to the data in the database. And that's essentially foolproof. There's no way to do SQL injection anymore at all. Input whitelisting and input blacklisting are filtering the input characters, like to remove the apostrophes, and you, whitelisting is where you only allow known good characters, and blacklisting is where you try to list all the bad characters and remove them, and whitelisting is much safer. But the safest procedure is actually output whitelisting, where after you're done doing whatever processing you're doing, and you're sending the data on to the next component, then you make sure there are only good characters in it. That's the safest procedure. Then even if the hacker is clever enough to input something, that is not bad, but somehow turns bad in your processing, you'll catch it. Anyway. So ideally, you should use parameterized queries and output or just? Uh, no, with parameterized queries themselves are enough to make all characters okay. Now you can have names with apostrophes in them, and it'll just be fine. Okay. Which is another side benefit, right? It's kind of rude to have people's names with apostrophes spelled without apostrophes because you're too sloppy a programmer to handle apostrophes. And if you use parameterized queries, you can have special characters in the name, and it doesn't matter. All right. Let me save this one. This is 129S, chapter 10, I think.